Howdy, beautiful Bart here, and welcome. This will be another video in the basic training series, and yes, it's Monday, and yes, it's not 8 p.m. It's uh, 20 minutes till 10. Well, didn't you say you were going to start doing your videos starting at um, 8 p.m. on Monday and Wednesday and Friday? Yes, yes, I did. Then I got sick again. So, yeah. We will skip past that part, but what I'm looking at for Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays being my stream days as a normal day for doing videos. Monday should be definitely a, a basic training day. Kind of get you started into the week and, you know, picking up either a new skill or relearning something you should already know or one of the basic things that are necessary for Unreal Engine 4 for you to know and understand. And I think on Wednesdays we're going to start doing the go to a game. Either Wednesday or Friday, I haven't decided yet, go into a game and play a small portion of that game and find a feature from that game and say, okay, how the hell did they do that? And then come back into Unreal Engine 4 and recreate that function. So, if you've got a request on that, let me know. All right, well, let's go into our test map. Ah, it's a nice drink of choice. Coffee. Little touch of um, peppermint mocha thrown in on top. Okay, this map here, the only thing that's currently in this map is my little teleporter here, and this is from last week's video. And we can go into our first person mode and throw out a little hockey puck and then teleport to that location. And I'm just going to use this same basic deal here to demonstrate what a spawn transform is. And in our player character, what I'll do is start off with, and this is throwing our teleporter. We're going to ignore all this stuff here because this is something we already talked about in my failed attempt. And I, I know how to multiplayer replicate that, but I just didn't finish doing it. So, what we're going to do here is we are going to use a spawn transform, and I'm going to use keyboard 1. So, with that, when we press keyboard 1, it's going to do something for us. And, okay, um, one thing we can do here is get a reference to our mesh. And we want to know what our transform is. Or let's actually just let's spawn an object. So let's create an object here, and I'm going to show you some things that happen whenever you you spawn an item with a transform. So let's look at our mesh here. Um, we already got our hockey puck, but let's go ahead and create a new object. And I am going to grab a cube. We're going to keep it simple. It's just that. It is a one by one by one. We don't want it to be one by one by one. We want it to be 0.25 by 0.25 by 0.25. So we're going to create this little tiny cube here to show you that it has a different scale from the original item that we just spawned in. We spawned an item and its transform is, well, there's your transform. Your transform is going to be your location, your rotation, and your scale. Okay, These, this is your transform of the object that I just spawned into the map. It's not exactly what I was planning on doing, but okay, no problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to rename this cube to, to Magic Box, whatever. And since we have starter content in here, let's go ahead and pick a different material. So we know that this is our box. So the material, let's 
screw it, let's just use Chrome. We're going to spawn our little Chrome cube. So our magic box, let's go ahead and right click on it and convert magic box to static mesh. Go to our assets folder and put it in there. And we're going to call this SM underscore magic box. Really creative and original. Yeah, right? So I'm going to take this one that we have now. It's spawn. I'm going to put it transform at 000. zero, zero. Alright, so there it are. And this stupid thing here. And the height of it is not going to allow us to let it sit at 000. zero, zero. So I'm going to raise it up just a little bit. So there, we have our magic box. Alright, so... We don't have an actual actor for it, so let's go ahead and look at it a different way here. Let's go to our gadgets, right click, blueprint, actor, BP underscore magic, box. Go in here, go to our mesh folder, find our magic box, add component, magic box. Now I just brought it in here and scale 111 on our transform. It doesn't matter that I scaled it to be um, 0.25 by 0.25 by 0.25. So now I'm going to drag that into the scene and look it forgot what our scale is. Our scale for this one is 0.25 that's what we told it to be but when we bring it in here it's one. Grab our mesh bring it in here and look it's forgotten everything on our scale. That's going to do nothing for us so how can we correct that? We can correct our transform by changing the scale right here to 0.25 0.25 and 0.25. So now our magic box is going to be the, the correct size. So if I drag it back in here, wait a minute, it's still one. So, huh, let's go in here, let's drag it from our blueprint, and guess what? It's in the right location. But you can see it's still sitting below the ground. I don't like that. So I'm actually going to go back into here. Go to my viewport, select my magic box, and you can see this little mesh floor. That is the floor. So bring it up to where it is now on top of the floor. So now if we go back into it, we're correct because we had to change the transform in the blueprint to where it shows here is 11111 whereas our original item we're still having to scale it to a quarter each because the mesh even though we we resized it and then brought it back over here it's still showing at a quarter so we're having to adjust our transform in the blueprint for our individual item to match what we need in the map okay follow with me there so let's go ahead and do this. We're going to spawn actor from class. All right, so that what we're going to spawn in is going to be our BP underscore magic box. And then we have a spawn transform. Okay. So now, our, what is the spawn transform? This is what we need to figure out. Well, we can make transform if we want to look at it this way. Um, um, I own all of the Cinti Studio assets. Everything. the um, All the simple and all the other uh, polygon stuff. I actually already owned them before the sale started. Love them. 
spawn BP. But what we need to do is create a location for it to spawn. Yes, you're going to give me an error because I don't I haven't told you where to spawn from. We actually have a spawner here. And we can't see it. Why can't we see it? The hell's on my cameras? It's not showing my cameras. But anyway, um, I'm going to, with nothing selected here, add a component. I'm going to add in a scene. Oh, now you're going to show me all this stuff here. So, with my scene component, I'm going to change its transform. And I just want it to spawn in front of the character. Right there is fine. What we will do is go back into my magic box blueprint and simulate physics. I didn't do that beforehand. Um, okay. If you got questions about any of the Cinti assets, feel free to ask. I'm just curious why that is grayed out. Not really going to matter all that much. Um, So our spawn transform, we can do this. We grab our scene component and we can get our world transform. It's going to get the location of this, its transform, and we're going to dump it in here. We're going to do it this way just because this is the normal way you would do things in the quick and easy way. So if we hit play, come over here and we hit one, there, we just spawned it in the correct scale. Because we fixed it in our blueprint, it now works. Of course, it has no collision to it whatsoever. So I guess one thing I do need to correct on our lovely magic box is go over here to collision, box simplified collision, save. It had no collisions to it, so... Now, if I come over here, press the 1 key, it now has collision. Make sure you jump up on it, and we can spawn another one. So, kind of cool if you wanted to create something that um, you were creating a platform, and you wanted to be able to jump from platform to platform to platform, and you want to spawn your own tr uh, um, hovering disk or whatever else. But, now that I've given it physics, I can simulate physics, actually, now because it does have collision to it. So, now whenever I spawn it in, I can kick it around and step on it. And, well, I can't really step on it, but I can kick it around. So, to understand that spawn transform, Doing this is going to work. However, it's not going to let you see exactly what it was. If you want to change the size of something, instead of doing that, let's go ahead and do like I was doing the first time, and let's make transform. This is going to let you see the location, the rotation, and the scale. So then we can adjust things like the scale here now. So what I'll do here is I will get world location and that's going to let me plug that into here for my location get world rotation so now I can plug that into the rotation as well if I want to change it if I don't I can leave it zeroed out but since I want to change my scale I can now manually change it right here and let's make it 25 by 25 by 25. 
Nope, that's probably going to suck. Let's do a 4x4x4 four by four by so now when we spawn it in here we are changing the scale of which our magic box or magic yeah our magic box gets scaled in here yeah that's this is kind of what I'm doing with these right here is the uh, the basic training series is picking out one thing like a spawn transform which is what this one's about and kind of talking about it going through it and um and as for an actual playlist, no. I need to reorganize the way that all my, my videos are, are stored on YouTube. Uh, most things that I do are, are by request. Uh, but I'm going to start doing more of the basic training things. So just same with this one right here. If I want it to be 1 on the z-axis for the height of it. Now I can place an item that has gravity in it. It's a little bit flatter. You can control the scale of the item by bringing off from the spawn actor from class and then from its spawn transform drag off from here into make transform will give you access to changing the um, the actual scale manually. So that's creating your spawn transform. Um, I know a lot of people end up trying to take shortcuts and they they download somebody else's projects and and stuff like that and have a hard time getting things to work. Bite size blueprints and have playlist kind kind of like Virtus. Yeah, Virtus does a pretty good job on his stuff right there. Um, it's kind of what I'm doing. I mean, like I said, this video was entirely about doing uh, the spawn transform. all about one basic concept I mean if you're looking for like creating a third person shooter or first person shooter or something of that nature then yeah they're kind of broken up here and there like the the video prior to the lesson right here was doing the um, creating a, a change in view getting across here and creating a um, a throwable item that you can use as a teleport system. So wherever that lands, whenever it makes that little explosion, it secured the location for you to be able to teleport to. Like, oh, I don't want that one. It went out of the world, so I can spawn another one. And that one didn't fall where I wanted, so now I can shoot them every couple seconds with a cooldown. So I can try to get them where I want them to go. I want to get on that platform. So this was a leftover from the um, the teleport video. Well, see, unlike um, you know the Virtus videos and and some of the other tutorial videos, I do mine as live streams. So I have a generic thumbnail that covers the basics and a live stream. That way, if I screw something up, then you can call bullshit and say, well, you know, you screwed that up, and, you know, how do you fix that? And and I show my mistakes, and I, I walk through them, um, as time permits. I, I allocate an hour for each stream, and if they run longer, that's fine, but um, I run for at least an hour. And if I complete something a little bit sooner, then instead of just shorting out the video, um... I'll come back and I'll stream on something else. So the reason why I don't have multiple different thumbnails and everything else is because these are streams. These are live streams, three nights a week. Um, better for worse. You, you see it as I figure it out. A lot of times whenever I'm creating features and functions, I have no idea what I'm doing. And I make it up as I go along to see if I can challenge myself to do it. 
<coughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah. Um, this one started late because I have been sick, but my, my normal schedule now is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at um, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Was that I started this one almost two hours late because uh, of being ill. I've pretty much been only able to sleep for about two hours, two and a half hours at a time. And occasionally I get three hours. And oh my God, I feel so great. Um, you know, with the lack of sleep, lack of quality sleep, it affects my, my mental acuities. So that's my normal schedule is Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, the other points would be um, as needed. I may stream it other times. If I come up with something that I really want to share with people, then I'll do that on, on a separate stream. Um, yeah, stuff like that. Actually going to change projects really quickly here. Um, And I know I've got the the Cindy Studios logo in this um, thumbnail for this video. Open project. I have so many projects open. So yeah. Um, try to get everything covered in the first 30 minutes of a video like this I was pretty much done within 15 minutes explaining everything needed to be done about um, um, spawn transforms it's a really simple thing so uh, let's go to the city For those who have been keeping up with uh, this project and uh, like I said there is a version of this that I put on Discord. Um, since I've not been feeling well, I haven't been able to get in here and do much with this this project. Um, this is based off of the Cindy Studios sci-fi uh, pack. I've added in a few little things here. Uh, the NPC just kind of randomly roaming around. I've got. Um, well, why walk when you got a hoverboard? So you got a working hoverboard, um, some music, some sound effects, some rockets that spawn at random intervals, um, NPC just kind of sitting around, chilling, strip club, so one of the things I need to, to figure out and, and kind of stumped me a little bit is getting an effective method of nobody wants to look at a robot scratch um, of canning the um, the dismount feature so yeah, let's wait and see if one of the rockets is going to spawn a couple little things on sci-fi I noticed on their their map here this sign right there was actually doubled up trying to add a few Easter eggs into the map but one of the things that I'm trying to do is come up with a good clean method of whenever I'm coming in here when I finish setting up this building here it's gonna be um, a restaurant you know the rockets have just a slight twist to them as they're flying by but whenever you go into this building we want to set it up to where it automatically dismounts you from your hoverboard so when you're in here interacting with other players or whatever else this is all multiplayer is it will dismount you you don't want people in here being a total douche knuckle and driving around on their hoverboard and jumping up on the tables and that kind of crap so to disable whenever you go inside of a building to automatically remove you from your your hoverboard so that would be doop, knock you back off and actually when you're inside to actually slow the character down and slow their walk speed down as well and 
problem that I run into is whenever you do go in and then you come back out, um, if you want to get back on your hoverboard, it's like, okay, bang, it knocks you off of there. You want to get back on, you've got to hit your number one key twice before you can get back on your hoverboard. Minor inconvenience, but I just need to come up with a cleaner method of doing it. What other questions you guys got? Since I've covered everything on the spawn transform within the first 20 minutes of the video, I'm just doing some Q&A stuff right now, and then what I can do is, if necessary, just do another stream just for goofing off and figuring out stuff. Put my rocket up top again. That I have not been feeling well. That's why I haven't been doing. It. animation of getting on and off. Um, honestly, when I was thinking about that as well, whenever you go on and off of the hoverboard, instead of it just flashing into the motion, um, this animation right here I made myself for being on the hoverboard. But the one thing that I thought about was if you wanted it to get something as a an easy-to-use animation, I would suggest probably um, starting with the um, draw pistol animation or draw rifle animation from the um, the animation starter pack. So it actually does a reach behind you and then there we go. And then you can coordinate um, the way that I actually did the um, use of the hoverboard is and hoverboard actually have the hoverboard actively on the player itself but by default I have visibility turned off Ugh, I hate whatever forced me to have to do a save so what you're doing when you're getting on the hoverboard what and you could actually just interject in a series of things like this um, the way I'm doing it currently is when you, since this is replicated, we'll start with the actual key press. Press 1 and it verifies whether or not you're dancing or not. That way you can't be dancing on the hoverboard. Um, it checks to see if you're inside or not. And if you are inside, then it won't let you use your hoverboard. So if you are, are inside, then faults then you can use the um, hoverboard if you're not when you hit the button again since we're using a flip-flop it says stop using it and that's pretty simple so since we're saying server use and server stop on the hoverboard server use just switch as authority and client use the server use is just run on server so this is what happens when you tell it to use, you're telling it to run this, which will go up to that next. If you're not doing multiplayer, then you don't have to worry about it. Okay, but since we're, we're doing a board sound, the, the sound effect for it actually working, uh, the one thing I did add in to the client stop, which I probably could have done up there in the actual stop, but it doesn't really matter for all that much, but this forces it to... Uh, stop playing the the hoverboard sound so essentially whenever you say to start using it you're telling it to set visibility to true so at that point here's where you can kinda go about it differently if you want to do it um, you could use a spawn transform system like we were talking about earlier spawn transform will actually um, say when you're not using the hoverboard it could be sitting on your back. Create a socket on your player character and it would spawn it there on your back. But then when you wanted it to go into an animation sequence, you're going to go from here to your hand to on the ground. So, you know, 
you could make your own custom animation montage system for it uh, but what you end up doing is you're having to either spawn it and remove it because it's going from your back to your hand and then to your feet so there's three different um, times you're gonna see it and you have to decide first off is it really all that necessary do I really need to see it in all three locations whenever I'm running through the map and I want to get on my hoverboard how much do I actually really need to see it to make it believable so I would when you're doing that you gotta have your own animations and then you you can actually instead of the the car driving most often if it's a not a player character driving the car then it actually will end up using a spline mesh and that's going to dictate where the car goes but something like an accident where you know if you want it as a staged event you need it to stop using the normal spline and actually use this spline over here where it comes over and runs into an object and then you're going to have to create your own um, physical effects for it it's then going to actually go through several stages um, one of the, the videos that I showed and one of the, uh, the demos that I did showed a car that when you're shooting it it changed its actual skeletal mesh of the car from pristine to looking damaged to then being blown all the hell and back and there was no transitional time between perfect to damaged but whenever it went from damaged to totally destroyed there was an explosion and smoke so it would then camouflage a lot of that um, just like the movies you're gonna have to use smoke and mirrors to uh, be able to hide certain things you have to decide really and truly what needs to be visible and how much you really need to show versus reality I mean there's this isn't reality this is a video game I mean can you jump this high every time you press you know you want to jump this high so you could build a system in to where you have stamina and if I jump this high once the next time I jump I can only jump half as high and then a third as high and then after about four to five times hell, I can't even jump because I'm worn the hell out so you have to decide what level of reality you want to put into your your system so when you go to the hoverboard how much transitional animations do you really need especially if you're going into a multiplayer environment do you want him to kneel down and grab the, the hoverboard from his back place it on the ground stand up and then step up onto it how much is that really necessary whenever you're you're trying to get from point A to point B do you want to sit there and wait three seconds for an animation system to come up just so now you can get on the hoverboard in realistic time um, how long would it take you to um, grab a skateboard off your back throw it onto the ground and then stand on it two seconds three seconds four seconds depends on how old you are me it might take an hour and a half but you know how much time would it take would it be instant no um, but you have to decide how much time do you want to make your player wait from the time that they press that one key to deploy that hoverboard before they're on that hoverboard and riding and then think about the player that has absolutely no freaking clue whatsoever about what or even how to spell Unreal Engine 4 or how to make their own games or anything else and they say well when the rank is the number one key I want to be able to get on my board and just go or and then you're gonna have another person says well it's unrealistic when I hit the number one key it magically appears a oh, fucking hoverboards magic shut up so you know <laughs> you're always gonna have people that are gonna be on both sides of that um, that that switch there is it's either taking too long or it's not realistic or it's you're not gonna please everybody whenever you're, you're building your game so just like a typical video game developer you get used to pleasing yourself I didn't come out the way that I really wanted to but yeah you know what I'm saying is you do what 
you think is necessary to try to please more. That I would do. I just haven't messed with it. Um, leaning left and right is a nice touch. Um, so when you're actually doing that, it takes three times as long to actually make that work. But it is a nice effect where you're doing it. So as I'm moving to turn right, my character kind of leans in a little bit. If I'm turning left, it kind of leans out a little bit or whatever. So just like on a real skateboard, you're going to lean, even though most of your leaning is done with your ankles and your feet and all that kind of stuff. But your body is going to, to lean in and lean out. Same thing with a bicycle. Um, so yeah, that's something to be added in later. This was just the early stages. We're talking about maybe an hour and a half, two hours to get everything done in here the way this is running right now. Um, so yeah, that's something that I will be doing in another video is setting up the lean system. Um, just because I like it. I think it's a nice touch. Is it necessary? No. Does it make the game feel a little nicer? Yeah, it adds a little bit of a polish to a turd. But before I start adding in things like a lean system to my character when he's on the um, the hoverboard, I'm going to take care of other things first. Um, things that will be more pertinent to actually making the game feel more like the game that it should be. Um, little things like moving this over so now whenever you come over here you can jump and be able to get to restricted areas where normally you wouldn't be able to get to. Was it necessary to do this? No. But will I keep this in? Nope. But you know players are going to want to go places where they're not supposed to. So for right now I'm just not I'm, I'm making it easy to get to those locations and I'll take those uh, spring pads out later. So I break down whenever I'm setting up the stuff for the game what is the features that I want in the game and yes there, there's a couple different rules of thought on doing that you can say okay well I'm gonna add one feature in and I'm gonna polish the hell out of it make sure it's done exactly how I want now and then I don't have to worry about, about it I can get back to it and I know that it's there and know that it works however for noob developers like myself I'm total noob and I'm trying to create a game I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna create all the features that I need right off the bat because things like the um, no doing levels is not hard to do it's just I think probably Wednesday I and mean, whenever I start talking about level design people get bored and, and want to leave and take naps and shit like that because um, either you like doing maps or you don't like doing maps uh, when it comes to actually doing maps and I look at other people's maps and okay I'm gonna give a critique to this map this is a demonstration map from the sci-fi project why am I still using it because it's not important for me to build a new map yet whenever I'm still developing features like um, this right here for my game whenever you come over to um, I don't know if you can see in the upper left hand corner it says not working yet whenever I hit the E key next to the charging station these are called charging stations but I'm gonna be using these as save game locations so if you see one of these stations somewhere around the map you'll be able to come over to it and save your game so like there's one right here um, in fact, this is actually going to be a vendor that allows you to upgrade your chassis. I'm already on a premium chassis, and then I can save my game. Same thing with, um, that's the trash can, but uh, ATM machines, uh, they'll be functional. So I have to go through and create that ATM system again. You walk over to it, and you can use the ATM, use your save machine, uh, so I'm going to take care of the little features like that right there before I even start going into worrying about building a map. 
Well then, to actually critique this map, let's start over here at the police car. Now that is something that I added in, and um, I took all the original cars out. Out of the, uh, the flashing lights in here, and the, the cops and whatnot. The first thing that I noticed was A, there were too many cars, and it's a demonstration map so that you look at it, it's supposed to demonstrate all the different things, I understand what it is and why it is. But if I was playing this as somebody else's game to critique this map. Alright, there was too much trash on the ground, so I removed a bunch of the trash as well. Um, one of the things I did notice was, even though you can't get back there, you could see through this area right there, and you, yeah, there was a an issue with that section. Look, I could come in right here. I could jump up, and I could go back into an area where I shouldn't be able to get to, and I could fall out of the world. So, um, a there was too much trash on the ground. Right now, there's still a little bit more trash than would be necessary. There should be more cars for static scenery. Sky being purple, I'd probably change that to a different color, but it's got a nice gradient to it, and you can see the um, planet in the sky. The whole thing to remember when you're making it. Um, yeah, this will do fine. Um, anything on this map right here, this is about the max that I would even consider for like mobile and stuff like that. This is actually probably a little bit large for mobile. Um, I would actually break this down probably into probably four or six sections and do level streaming on for something for our mobile platform. Now, I'm playing on this map right here. Um, I haven't had anybody complain about um, any issues. Average potato computer can can play this map. Um, the dungeons, uh, I, I noticed that that map right there has got a lot of load, and people who have potato computers trying to play somebody's game with the dungeons um, demo map, they just they can't load it. It's just too much for them. Things to think about when you're creating a map. When you're placing items into your map, um, honestly, you have to think of player flow. Okay? Like this light post right here, whenever you load up this demonstration map, it was right here in front of the door. Why would you put a big ass light in front of a door? So I slid it over a little bit so you could actually go right into it. Player flow being able to um, guide the player to the areas you want them to go in a nice balance of I want you to come over here to the strip club and see the robot titties okay how do you lure a player to come in there well tits and ass is always a good thing um, you're in music okay well I'm standing here I can hear music coming from here and then I see movement Oh, oh, there's people in here. Whether they're real or not, you can see, okay, there's bartenders, and there's strippers on the stage. What I'll probably do is I have another one that walks on here. No. VR could do a hell of a lot more than what you can think. Depends on the VR. Whether well, you're, you're strapping some cardboard wrapped around a freaking cell phone to your face, or you're actually using a VR headset. I mean different VR can handle different um, amounts, but if you look at other games like um, oh shit, I can't think of the name of it, but it's a space game, or most of the most of the crap that I see for um, VR is pretty much crap. Um, the average person is not ready for playing a, a AAA title in VR. Because when you get into that VR environment, some people just can't adjust to it and they end up getting seasick or nauseous or throwing up or falling over. So you have to think of each platform. And a game that plays great on, on 
PC it may not play great on console, which may not do good on VR. So each each game you have to think about the platform that it's going to be on. You have to think about the so many different things, and what I always preach to everybody is the seven P method. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Think about what you want to make. Think about what you need to make. And plan out everything ahead of time before you even start putting the first bit of code down. Before you even think about a splash screen or um, first person or third person or, or whatever. Or VR or console or PC or Linux or Macs or whatever. Before you do anything. You need to sit down and know what your game's going to be. I'm not talking about, well, I just want a first-person shooter where I can blow shit up. Then you need to uninstall Unreal Engine 4 and go play Minecraft. If you don't have a good, solid direction to work towards, you're, you're going to... You put shit in, you get shit out. Your games are going to look like mine and be horrible. Um... But no, but seriously though, is I have the most important tool you can ever use. Um, and let me see. I know you can't see what I'm doing because I'm off screen here. Notepad is the most important development tool you're going to run into for. Um, creating a game notepad if you're using a Windows PC before you open up Unreal Engine 4 and start making anything you need to open up notepad and you need to create a basic layout of what your game is going to be why do I do that or why do I do that why because you need to stay on track you need to know what you're creating before you start creating it because you need to break down certain aspects of it. I know this is getting away from spawn transforms. So how about what I'll do is I will continue the basic training video on creating the very first aspects of a game. It's not that I'm going to redo the basic training series, but I want to get this conversation in its own video. It would make much more sense. And I'm going to go shoot the neighbor's dog. Um, so, I'm going to take a few minutes of a break. I said the first 15 minutes of this video covered everything I needed to cover about spawn transforms. And the rest has just been shooting back um, questions and, and generalized BSing. So, I'm going to take about 5 to 10 minute break. And I'm going to start up a fresh video. That's enough time for it to clear out the cache on, on YouTube so I can create a whole new name and a whole new stream. Um, and then I'll start back up with um, starting a game. And I'll put something to that effect in the title. And it's probably going to bore the shit out of some people, but you know what? It's necessary. It really is. So, let's do that. And I will be back very shortly, and we will see you guys in a few minutes.